Welcome to Stave Draws. I'm Stave, an illustrator and animator. And in this video, I'm going to show you uh, a drawing I did of this background. And I'm now in my studio, which is in the center of Harlem. And I have this view of the big church. It's right in the center of Harlem, which is in, in the Netherlands. I always look at this view and I think to myself, that would make a great illustration. And I really got inspired by a Dutch artist uh, who has passed away, but it was a great artist and he's called Anton Pieck. And I'll show you more of his work uh, from this book, but I'll show you later. And uh, he was an illustrator who lived near Harlem and he also drew uh, a lot of scenes from Harlem, but from the old days. So they were all done uh, in watercolors and I really wanted to challenge myself in doing a poster of this view in Procreate with the Apple Pencil. So I hope you enjoyed this video. So these are some uh, drawings of uh, Anton Pieck and I bought this book in the 80s. And you know, he drew a lot of old scenery from uh, the golden age or uh, I think it's the 17th century, 18th century. And I really got inspired by these kind of illustrations he did with the snow and everything. And uh, he did a lot of uh, illustration and he was inspired by Arthur Rackham, which is an uh, English illustrator. And you can really see it in his work. Just gonna go through uh, some of the pages of, the, of, of this book. There you can see, you know, he drew everything from the old days. And he also made some designs for the Efteling, which is the Dutch Disney world. And it's really in this style. And he did all the fairy tales and they made a theme park out of it. Also got a, a postcard and that is what I based my uh, illustration on. So I found this illustration, uh, I got a postcard uh, a long time ago but I lost it. But on the internet I found this illustration and this one is made from a uh, scene from the, the church I'm going to draw. And this was a, a watchtower for the fire department. And they could uh, look over Harlem and when they saw fire they would call out with this little horn and this uh, was the postcard and they made it a little bit more blue so that it could be um, a Christmas card and well this is the illustration of the book and here another illustration and I really like this these washes he did with watercolor and this is the original illustration and it's got a little bit more color to it. And this really inspired me to do uh, my illustration of uh, the Grote Markt, uh, of the big church that's in the center of Haarlem. So this is the view of uh, my studio and I'm looking at the Bavo church. And the fun fact about the church is that it's built upon the highest point of Harlem. So wherever you are, you always see the church. And when I was in San Diego, I saw a great painting by the Dutch painter Ruisdaal of Harlem. And it also features the church. So I started doing uh, some sketches and I wanted to uh, make a poster of this illustration. So I had it set to A2 uh, paper, which is 594 millimeters by 420 millimeters at 300 dpi. And that's a very big canvas to work on. And I think it's the biggest canvas you can work on in Procreate. So I just started out doing some preliminary sketches and I could also test out the watercolors that are already in Procreate. And I also tested my 
own brush and I created that for Inktober and that's a brush that has a little bit more of a wash to it and that seemed to work perfect to do uh, watercolors with. When you design a drawing with window panes and uh, you want the church to be uh, in the middle of it, uh, you really need to take care of where you place the church because it needs to fit into a window pane because it's the center of attention. So I started out uh, doing this sketch and just tested out uh, the washes and if I could, you know, uh, do watercolors in Procreate. So that test uh, seemed to work out, but I didn't really like the perspective in the sketch. So I redrew everything and I uh, took some other pictures from above because I'm looking down on to the buildings and uh, I used the perspective guide. You can use a perspective guide in Procreate and with the perspective guide I drew uh, most of the buildings and I first did the background and uh, uh, also drew the window panes and then I could plan out uh, the tower of the church and you cannot see it in total but uh, you know it's there and um, I also wanted to uh, placed this illustration in the 20s, in the late 20s, because I really like that era and the design of uh, lamps and, and other uh, attributes. And I also wanted to pay tribute to my grandfather. And the story goes is that he had an animation studio in Haarlem, which was called Tekenfilmfabriek Hollandia. Cartoon Factory Hollandia and I just wanted to make this his view uh, and there are some references to the movies he, he has made and uh, I also have some movie posters in my studio. There are cartoon posters of his cartoon character Quab and later on he also produced uh, the movies for the American market and then he was called Horus Hippo and I'm now um, using some reference you don't see it here but I also have a lamp from the 20s and also um, a stapler and that's always good you know to use reference material if you want to do uh, and set an illustration into uh, an era and this is the final sketch I've made and it's pretty much cleaned up and I'm going to um, merge down because I did it in two parts I first drew the background with the church and the window pane and the foreground I uh, sketched in a different layer Then I took a snapshot of uh, the illustration and duplicated everything uh, six times in another file and then I did some um, color tests and I really liked the this color test and it has a bit of the um, afternoon because it's set at 4.30 p.m., around 4.30 p.m., and then you have uh, the setting sun. What I'm now going to do is um, select the sketch layers and merge them down, because when you work in such a big file, you have to be very um, conscious of the, how many layers you can use, because it's... Uh, such a big file you don't have that many layers to work in so I set the 
sketch to 20% and then in a different layer I'm going to do the colors and I'm using my own brush I created and when you do watercolors you really um, need to build up your colors because it's different than working in oil paint with oil, oil paint you uh, draw from dark to light and with watercolors you uh, build up your colors from light to dark and you just really you know need to take your time because it's a very transparent medium and you can really uh, make richer colors when you um, work very transparent so you can layer your artwork with different colors and then you get a much richer color than if you would, you know, just paint it in one color. You can also uh, adjust the background color of your uh, canvas in procreate and I've I've now set it to a very light blue gray tone because that's the the average uh, color of the entire uh, painting so in that way you won't have to paint everything in that tone Now already doing some uh, background colors for the sky, but it's a little bit too colorful. But the great thing about working digital is that you can always change it later. The great thing about working uh, in Procreate on the iPad is that you can draw wherever you like. So this painting uh, took a very long time uh, to do and actually I really don't like uh, drawing uh, buildings because it's just too much detail and you know if you don't like something you will avoid it and sometimes you just have to set yourself some new goals and in that way you can only improve if you do things you never done before. And because I've set the background to a very light blue or a very light gray, um, I can also test out uh, the snow I'm going to paint because snow is white and then you need uh, a color that's darker than that otherwise you won't see it. We also need to do some uh, washes in uh, the snow as well, otherwise it will be just white snow and that's not very interesting. So now I'm building up uh, uh, the colors and um, especially in the church in the back um, and that's the, the darkest part of the background and you, this is really a, a fast forward but it took around uh, 30 hours to do the entire uh, illustration 
When you work on uh, the iPad Pro, it's essential that you keep your uh, surface clean because the Apple Pencil is very sensitive and your fingers have some grease on it and when you want to uh, do some delicate strokes on it, um, it w may cause um, some disturbance in uh, your drawing. And great thing about iPad Pro is that you can do a split view so you just drag uh, another app and you can do a split view and I have my photos app with the reference picture of uh, the church I took from one story above where I work because I really needed to look down on uh, the the buildings and the houses and I just use it as reference and I'm not painting everything that's in the picture because there were some buildings that were built in the 70s and I just drew some other buildings uh, instead to keep it in style and in uh, to uh, the era it's set in in the 20s What I really love about drawing on the iPad with uh, Apple Pencil is that you can take it anywhere you like. And I did this illustration uh, in, I think, two weeks. And I drew at home and also in my uh, studio. Uh, and this is the final uh, drawing of the background. And I'm going to... Uh, do the foreground in a different layer and when you look at the coloring uh, it's set up with some shades and the color and the highlights and in the highlights I did the snow so you can merge down the layers and I wanted to keep it as compact as possible and I'm going to create a new layer for the foreground color and in that way you can always adjust the transparency or some other things of your drawing and it's always good you know to name your layer so that you exactly know on which layer you're uh, painting on So the foreground of uh, this illustration will be darker and I'm going to play with uh, two different light sources. There's the light source of uh, outside, but it's um, around 4.30, so it's not really bright outside. And there's also uh, the light that comes from the lamp. When you work, um, in watercolors you really uh, need to plan out uh, what you're um, going to paint because you cannot go back. I'm of course painting everything digital so you can always redo something but I really want to stay true to doing watercolors and uh, in that way you will uh, come closer to doing watercolors digital than if you do everything with a redo. It's really about building up your colors and uh, just start out very light and then build it up with darker tones and use uh, different hues to uh, build up your colors and it's the same with uh, doing the lamp. I just painted um, a lighter tone because that's where uh, the light will hit and 
the lamp had a very uh, interesting uh, material. Because you can also paint uh, different materials and the lamp uh, is metal and also the stapler that's also from uh, a certain material. The paper you can paint in a, a different way as well. And that's always good, you know, to have some reference and to play with the light and see how the light falls onto shapes. I used a, a little trick for uh, the light of the lamp and I uh, set it the layer to overlay and that's the only uh, digital enhancement I used. And when you're finished with your illustration you always need to sign it. I had a lot of fun creating this illustration. It took a very long time but all that counts is the end result. I hope you like this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up. I will make some prints of uh, the poster and I also uh, going to make some uh, Christmas cards but you can um, order the poster uh, through Etsy but I'm still waiting for the printer to send them to me. So uh, I will uh, show you the poster in the next video. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles!